when God created you, he stepped back and he looked at you and he said, now, she's good. <laughs> He's good. Every day that you are God's masterpiece. God has planned for you to have all things that God not will, but has. Listen, everything that you would ever need is already been provided in Christ. Choose a life, keep a noble way. Keep your hope alive. This is Alan Bagg, and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. It's so good to have you with us again, and we are having a wonderful time having a look back at Come Celebrate 2018. We were breaking forth, and we still are. The Word is so powerful and so rich. We had some great speakers here imparting the Word of Faith for this wonderful year where we can expect great beginnings. And I wanted you to be a part of it as well. Now, we can't, just time-wise, we won't be able to show all of the messages, but here are some portions that you will enjoy. Enjoy. It is a time for great beginnings. 2018, no more waiting. If you will go to Ephesians chapter 2, one verse there, verse 10, in the NIV, it says, for we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do bad works. Do you have your Bible there? Well, let's read it again. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So the assignment that God has given each and every one of us to perform on the earth, God, way before you were born, He had already empowered you to do what He's asking you to do. Hmm. <laughs> I know what some of you are thinking, well, you know, we'll never get that land, we'll never get that land, you know. I'll never be blessed because you look at your circumstance. But, 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 Pastor, b before you and your wife were born, before there was ever a Bay Christian family church, God created you guys in Christ Jesus to do good works. But the good works that he's asking you to do to build and to get the gospel out through the internet and to get the gospel out through South Africa and the nations of the world, He has already prepared you before you were born. For those of you who are business owners, for those of you who desire to own a business, for those of you who are working, running a family, or whatever you are doing right now in life, you have the ability to perform the duties. I know sometimes you don't feel like you do, you don't feel like you have the strength. You're stressed out and you don't think that you can accomplish the work. But according to this verse here, it is saying, which God prepared in advance. Yes, so in other words, the Bible is telling us the ability to perform was already given in advance. Yes, hey. yes, oh, you didn't get that, man. Got it. The ability to do what you are required to do was given to you in advance. So for those of you who desire to accomplish great things, I don't know what that, that thing or things may be, you have the ability to do it. Would, would you just look at your neighbor and say, don't be scared? Okay. And why are you so scared of what's before you? One translation of that same verse, Ephesians 2.10, you know, really just blessed me because it says, we are God's masterpiece. Handiwork, masterpiece. Masterpiece. Do you really know who you are? I don't 
don't think half of you know who you are. You just think, well, I'm just a woman. I'm just a man. You know, I just go to big Christian family church. No, you're more than that. You are God's masterpiece. Because Genesis 1 tells us that everything God did when he created it, he stepped back and he said, whoa, that's good. <laughs> so even though people may look at you, you're ugly, you're this, you're that. When God created you, he stepped back and he looked at you and he said, now, she's good. <laughs> He's good. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, I'm good. Because <laughs> they, they may not know if they're good. So you got to declare every day that you are God's masterpiece. When you recognize that as a woman, you will never rely on just a man to tell you who you are. That's a good place to shout. When you know that you are God's masterpiece, you don't need a man to tell you, hey, you know you're cute. Because when he says you're cute, you're going to say, oh, I know. I know. <laughs> He's just confirming what you already know. Because you're what? God's masterpiece. I want every woman to stand up right now. Every woman, if you're a woman in the house, Make some noise if you know you're God's masterpiece. Yes, you are. Would you just high five a woman next to you and say, Girl, I'm God's masterpiece. Oh, I was uniquely designed by God. Now sit down, ladies, for a moment. I want all the men in the house to stand. Come on, brothers, make some noise if you're God's masterpiece. Would you now, now don't, don't high five a, another man. Just go like this. Brother, I'm God's masterpiece. Come on now. Give him that little manly handshake. <laughs> you may be seated, man. It says we are God's masterpiece. So there are four things we can learn from this passage of Scripture. Number one, we're God's masterpiece. This simply means each of us was uniquely designed by God. He formed us. He created us. He wired us. He formed us. He created us. He wired us. He wired us in a very unique way. See, you go years ago when I was a little boy, I never really, honestly, truly loved me. I didn't. I didn't love me. Because my life was controlled by the opinions of people around me. <laughs> so I felt that I wasn't handsome. I wasn't, I didn't have the qualities to become great. I, I just felt that I was really not special. But the more I got into the Word of God, and I realized that there are people who are used by Satan to challenge your DNA. Uh, there are people who are used by the devil to go around and say, well, you know, you're not supposed to be like that. There are people who try to put you in a box and they size up the box and they say you can only live and function in this perimeter. You, you can't go outside of it, but I love the theme of your conference, Breakout. And God sent me all the way from the United States of America to South Africa to tell people it's time you lift your faith foot, foot and kick every barrier down and break out. Break out of the mindset that the enemy is trying to control you with. I finally had to accept that. That I am God's masterpiece. He wired me. There's only one me. I don't ever want to be like Dr. Allen. 
You shouldn't want to be like me. You shouldn't want to be like your brother, your sister. No. You are wired in a unique way. That's why God gave you a unique thumbprint. If he wanted you to be your neighbor, he would have made sure your neighbor and your thumbprint are the same. Let's look at your neighbor and say, just be yourself. Stop trying to imitate people. And that's why the world, the world creates an image where they want you to imitate famous people. Well, if that one is famous, everybody want to be that person. Everybody want to be that person. No, just be yourself. My goodness, it is not wise to be a cheap copy of somebody else. Be an original. When you step out of your house every day, the devil must be nervous saying, oh, she got up this morning, he got up this morning. Don't try to be somebody else. He wired you. You are God's masterpiece. We look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are not seen. Stop walking beneath your status. You are a royal family. You are a king. You carry his life inside of you because the greater one lives in you. He's waiting for the body to rise up and realize who you are. Speak something into existence that has not yet been manifested. And when you begin to release that word from out of your mouth, you will see your life go to a whole nother level. Satan, you give him back double everything. Somebody stand up and shout. Break forth. No more waiting. Break forth. No more waiting. It's payback time. Shout out double. 2018. No more waiting. Great beginnings. I break four. Wow, that was a powerful word. Now, you know, this program, we are limited to time. We're not going to be able to show you the entire broadcast, the entire program, the entire message, but we do have them available. It's on MP3. You can even get it on CD if you would like to do that. And, and you can hear the whole message from beginning to end. And some of them are even longer than, than you would expect. It's because we had so much time in the Word of God just to stir up that faith. And so we just want to show you portions of it. You're going to enjoy it. Here's our next speaker. It is a time for great beginnings. 2018, no more waiting. I want to share this morning on what I titled changing levels. Changing levels or shifting levels. Uh, in the book of Genesis chapter number one, uh, verse number 28, uh, we saw that yesterday during the offering, that when God blessed man, he spoke certain words to him and spoke about his replenishing, his multiplying, his subduing, and having dominion. So whatever God gives to you, he wants you to multiply it. He wants you to increase it. What God basically gives to all of us is potential, ability, talent, gifting. And then from that, the, 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 how much you produce is decided by you. But everything that you need, just as uh, the bishop last night was speaking uh, and, and, and he talked about the one talent, the, the, the person with the one talent, the one with the two, with the, the one with the three. So everything that God does, he is a, pros, a progressive, does them in progression. God begins small, but he doesn't remain small. There's nothing wrong in your starting small. That's where all great people begin from. Don't allow the, the, where you are starting to get you frustrated. That's a good place to start. Did you realize that today we've got billions of people on earth, some in heaven uh, and some in hell? However, God began with how many? One. And inside that one, he put in potential capacity and ability to produce. Yeah. So anything and everything that has life in it has capacity, has ability to reproduce. In the book of Isaiah, chapter number 43, uh, uh, 40, uh, 54, where, let's read it. Isaiah 54. Where are you, Isaiah? Okay, let's see. From verse 1. Sing, O barren, 
You who have not born, break forth into singing, cry aloud. You who have not labored with child, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of a married woman, says the Lord. So here, God is speaking by the mouth of Isaiah the prophet, and he's speaking about the, the, uh, just hear how he puts it. Sing, O barren. Why should a barren lady begin to sing? It's because even though she's barren, we've not seen production, but God is saying that's not where she, she should see her ending. She's supposed to produce. So the fact that there's nothing right now does not mean you are supposed to die with nothing. So she was barren, but she should begin to sing because reproduction or productivity or life or increase or abundance is going to happen. Verse 2, enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwelling. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords and strengthen the stakes. For you shall expand to the right. Touch your neighbor and say, this sounds like me. That what's about to happen to me. I don't know about you, but for me, I'm about to expand to the right, about to expand to the left. Listen, you have a choice to make what direction you expand. Oh, yeah. The fact that there's already somebody on the right or on the left does not mean that you can't make room for you. Yeah. You decide how far you go. Oh, yeah. Dr. Allen was speaking about our church in, in the slum, but now we've changed the whole environment. It was a decision we made. God gave vision, and the vision brought about enlargement. We decide, as God said, you know, uh, the, when he was speaking to, to Abraham, he said, as far as you can what? See. So how much you get out of what God has already provided or made available is decided by how far you see. Amen. When you read the book of Romans, chapter number 8, verse number 32, the Bible says that, you know, God who did not spare Jesus Christ but gave him up for you, how shall he not together with him give you or freely give you how many things? All things. God has planned for you to have all things, but you may die with nothing if you don't know what God has made available. That's why you need the revelation. You need the insight. A person without revelation is like a person that goes into the grocery store and buys himself or herself a, a coconut, the plant. I mean, or the sorry, not the is it the fruit, coconut fruit, and then. So they said, okay, this is great. You will enjoy it. And the person goes home and is trying to eat this thing and it's all fiber in the mouth, eating fiber. Then goes back to the shop, complaining to the shop owner, what did you give to me? You gave me fiber. I paid money for this. Yeah. And the person says, no, it's not supposed to be fiber. Yeah. What did you buy? No, I bought coconut fruit. But, but oh, see, see my teeth, see my teeth. The person says, no, you don't eat the fiber. The real deal is inside. You need to crack the shell and go deeper. And then when you go deeper, you will eat the real thing. Many of us are sitting in church eating fiber. And we are blaming God and blaming the devil or blaming the shop owner, blaming your husband, blaming your wife, blaming the pastor. This church has lost the anointing. No, you are the one that has got stuck with fiber. We are eating real food here, honey. Somebody says, uh, you know, uh, God is no longer moving here. I'm going to the church next door. Listen, it's not about the church. It's what you are holding. Yeah. Where you are at. Yeah. And, and when you read the Bible in the book of second, uh, sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter number 2 from verse 9 to about verse number 12, paraphrasing because of time, the Bible says, eye has not seen, ear has not heard. Neither has it entered the heart of men. The things, again, things that God not will but has. Listen, everything that you would ever need is already been provided in Christ. Not going to. Now somebody says, we're just going to pray and ask God to give. He says, I've given. Somebody says, oh no, we are on a journey. Let's let, let, let just pray that the Lord come and be with us. No, hey, honey, when did he leave you? You say, but Pastor God, don't you pray? When you were coming here, didn't you pray for the Lord to come and be with you? No, no, he said, Lord, I am with you to the end. And the end hasn't come. Yeah. 
and he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So when did he leave me and I need to call him to come be with me on this trip? Oh, Lord, please just heal me. He said, I already healed you. So, you know, some, you know, we pray religious prayers and we think God will be moved by our religiosity. God is only moved by principles and truths in his word. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter number 11 verse 9, it says, my righteous ones or the righteous shall be delivered through knowledge. When you read what Solomon writes in Ecclesiastes, the very last chapter from, you know, chapter 12, when you read around verse 9, 10, and 11 for time, I will not open into that, but at your own time you can read it, where it says that, you know, he was talking about vanity and of vanity, all is vanity. He says the preacher was wise. When it was time that people wouldn't want to get knowledge, what did he do? He sought for words put Proverbs in place and taught the people knowledge. Alan Bank Ministries is coming to your area. If you're in the Pretoria area this weekend, please come and enjoy some time under the ministry of Alan Bag. He will be ministering at Christian Revival Church, the ministry of pastors at Anarita Bosov. For any information regarding this engagement, please contact us or visit us online at allenbagministries.org. Many people believe that God controls the flow of money into your life and into my life. It's not true. true. God doesn't give the wealth. Well, well, well. He's created, created wealth, wealth, but He gives you power, power to, get to get it. Us, us, us. Bang, bang, the word, 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 applying the applying principle, the principle that releases the releases flow. The Join Alan Bagg and Didier Tassan for the Faith and Finance Conference, taking place from the 30th of July till the 1st of August. When you find out your passion and your purpose and the gifting that God has given you, is to put you in a position where you are experiencing an unlimited supply. Your well is in the center of God's will. Join Alan Bagg and Didier Tassan for the Faith and Finance Conference at the Bank Christian Family Church from the 30th of July till the 1st of August. Don't miss out. Register online and secure your seat to be part of this dynamic impartation from two leaders who will help you understand Kingdom Finance. 2018, glory, glory, no glory. more waiting. We're so excited for Come Celebrate. Woo! Yes. Welcome celebrators here, family. Amen. And we are so expectant make a decision this week i'm going to be good soil god's got you this week amen he has so much in store for you we look not to the things that are seen but to the things that are not seen stop walking beneath your status you are a royal family you are a king you carry his life inside of you because the greater one lives in you he's waiting for the body to rise up and realize who you are speak something into existence that has not yet been manifested. And when you begin to release that word from out of your mouth, you will see your life go to a whole nother level. Satan, you give it back. Double everything. Somebody stand up and shout. Break forth. No more waiting. Break forth. No more waiting. It's payback time. Shout out double. 2018, no more waiting, great beginnings, I break four. You know, I, I've, I said it again and again and again, this program is just too short to be able to show you everything. And yet we had such a download, think about it, from Monday to Friday, every day we had morning and evening sessions, Monday night, Tuesday to Friday mornings and evenings. A lot of word was imparted. And so we're giving you some insight to it here on the program. But I want you to get the fullness of the messages. So get a hold of your set today. You can get on CD, even on MP3. You know how this works. It's on a USB stick. You stick it in your computer and get it onto your phone, into your car. 
so that you can listen to it again and again and again. These promises are for all of us as the body of Christ. And I want you to break forth into your great beginning. This is the year of 2018. No more waiting. And so get your set today. It's going to help build and encourage your faith. Now, friend, if you've not yet given your life to Jesus, I want you to know He loves you. He died for you, gave His life for you, and then rose from the dead, proving that your sins are forgiven. Today, all you have to do is believe that. The Bible says, believe that with your heart, confess it with your mouth, and you will be saved. And so I want to lead you in that prayer right now. Let's pray it together. Yes, today, while you're watching, say this out loud with me. Dear Jesus, thank you. You died for me. You gave your life for me. And then you rose from the dead. Today you are alive. I believe you are my Lord. You are my Savior. From this day on I live for you, to serve you, to worship you. One day I will leave this earth and I'll stand in front of you and see you face to face. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Well, praise God. If that's the first time you prayed that prayer, I have a gift for you here today. It is something that's going to help build and develop your faith. It explains to you what happened, some guidelines now that you are a Christian. A way to read your Bible from cover to cover, just by doing a little portion of reading every single day, in one year you'll get through your entire Bible. Isn't that awesome? And then this wonderful, encouraging CD. That, that's a free gift I want to sow into your life. If you write to me at the address over there or call us on that phone number, as soon as we got your details, we'll send that to you and we'll be with you in a few days' time. Well, we look forward to being with you again tomorrow. This is Alan Bagg reminding you that Jesus is Lord. Remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. Alan Bagg Ministries is making the series that featured as this week's Wisdom for Life programs available to you for purchase. If you missed any of this week's programs or if this week's Wisdom for Life programs have helped you, we encourage you to purchase the series featured on this week's Wisdom for Life programs and have them available to strengthen your faith when needed. The series featured as this week's Wisdom for Life programs is available in digital format. So purchase yours online at allenbagministries.org or contact us to order your series at any of these details.